All right, so we want to go ahead and welcome everyone that is joining us right now. We're going to begin in, in just a just a moment here, just allowing uh, for anybody else who's about to uh, uh, to log in to log in with us. But if you are hearing my voice, uh, you are on live. So uh, again, we just want to welcome you. Uh, we want to uh, thank you for joining us, and we'll begin in just a few seconds. So uh, once again, we want to welcome absolutely all of you who are joining us today, uh, or for those who are going to be watching this later on, uh, we're hoping we don't have any technical problems. Um, uh, but if we do, we're, just, we're going to keep going. And so uh, we want to welcome you uh, joining us on this uh, YouTube live stream, uh, this Zoom conversation on what we think is a very important topic. Before we jump into the topic, um, very quickly, Andrew, Jason, how are you guys doing? All right? Doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I know my I know my name says Andre, but it's Andrew. <laughs> yeah, can can we just call you Andre uh, Andre for uh, the rest of this? Yeah, uh, some people yeah? call so some guy in uh, in elementary said he couldn't say Andrew, so you would call me Andre. Andre, I see. We'll just call you Drew. How about that? I think that will work. Um, and Jason, you doing all right? Yeah, I'm good. I mean, just obviously in the need of a haircut, but. Hey, man, we got to do what we got to do. Hey, you know what? Look, I think everybody's hair is getting long. That's what I was trying to say last week uh, before I got cut off by Spectrum. So, um, you know, I apologize for that. But uh, hey, you got to pay that bill. Yeah, <laughs> I, I paid it. Don't worry. Don't worry. I, I, I got paid recently. So uh, every, everything's good. Should be good. Um, but anyways, uh, again, we want to welcome everybody that's watching us live. Uh, for those of you who are not going to watch us live and are watching us later on, that's OK as well. Uh, but if you are live, we just want to remind you that we do want you to be part of this conversation. Um, we want to just uh, give a quick shout out to Elias and to uh, Chris who are joining us. Um, I see someone by the name of Master Chief. I don't know who that is. I know what Master Chief is. All right. But <laughs> I, I'm sure that is not the name of the person. So whoever that is, we want to welcome you. Um, yeah. If the Lord, hey, if the Lord's bringing you Master Chief, man. I, you know what I mean? We're doing right. something good. <laughs> doing, 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 something, doing something good. Um, I, I do want to just a uh, quick shout out uh, to all of the young people uh, that will be watching us out here in uh, Inland Spanish and High Desert Bilingual. I, I just want to make sure we clarify this, by the way. All right. Uh, this is a joint cooperation between both churches. Like this isn't just Inland Spanish or High Desert Bilingual. Uh, if you look at um, the uh, the promos, it literally says High Desert Bilingual and Inland Spanish, right? So this is, we're just trying to do something for young people, trying to do something in English uh, so that we can all uh, get a get a good and, 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 and blessing, right, out of, out of all this. Um, so again, we want to welcome you. And as our conversation is going along, if there is a question, uh, please feel free, put it in the chat. If we can involve it in the conversation, we'll try to. Um, and, you know, we'll see, we'll see how things go and, uh, and where the Lord leads us. And one last shout out here to Jaylene, who uh, said happy Sabbath uh, to everyone here as well. Um, so today's, today's uh, message or today's conversation is really a conversation. It's titled Got Church. Okay, Got Church. And it's about the importance of church. But before we jump into this, I'm going to have a word of prayer. Uh, any of you want to take a shot at the initial prayer? All right, let's go. Let's pray. All right, let's do All right, this. then. Uh, if you guys could also join me, uh, join me for some prayer, guys. Um, bow your heads. Uh, Father God, I want to thank you, uh, first of all, Lord, for another day of life. Not just any day, Lord, but the Sabbath. Uh, the Sabbath where we could, uh, a day that we could rest from all the worries that we have during the week, and especially with everything that's going among us, Lord. We could fully rest in you. Now, Lord, uh, I hope that you bless today's conversation. You know, it's a topic that... It's not that just us three at one point wondered, but it's also something that not just the youth, but also adults struggle with sometimes, Lord. I pray that this conversation be guided by you and whatever we may uh, talk about, whatever we may bring up, that, um, that it be a blessing to whoever's watching us. I ask for all of this in your name, I pray. Amen. 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 Appreciate that, Jason. Um, so again, uh, just a quick shout out to uh, Abigail, to uh, Desiree, who are also joining us, uh, Luz Celis, I think you may know her, Andrew, 
as well. <laughs> um, we uh, we want to welcome everybody that is joining us. Um, all right, so we're gonna jump straight into this, and we're gonna go to the juggler of all questions. All right, this this is the question: Does church save me? All right, can church save me? Does church save me? And I think a lot of us have this question. Uh, and before we start answering this, there was um, uh, last week, as we were finishing, uh, Elias had brought up a question that that we feel we're slowly going to get to. Like, we, we can't answer this question directly. We're going to build up to this. But this is the first stage of us answering this question, this issue of church. But let's begin there. Does church save me? What do you guys think? Well, uh, this is this is the divider right here, right? I think uh, <laughs> you, you said we're all going to come from different angles or have different point of views. Um, the question, does church save me? I, I find that that's an interesting one. I, I want to say no and yes, right? I think when we when we think of the uh, the question, does church save me? We try to sometimes oversimplify it, right, with our questions. And I think it becomes more and more not complicated, but it comes becomes deeper the more and more we look into this uh, this question. But uh, before we even answer the question, does church save me? I think we have to understand, well, what is it that saves us, right? I have a verse here in uh, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 that says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So right here, we're, we're given the, the def well, I want to say the definition, but the means by which we are saved, right? And it says that we're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. So we have to realize that salvation is a gift of God. There's nothing that we can physically do okay. to be saved. It is even through faith, right? It's still a gift of God. So does mm -hmm. church save me? When, when we look at this verse from right from the beginning, no, no amount of church or church attending is going to save you. Okay. But I want to rephrase this question. But, uh, I want to, I guess, give a better question. Not does church save me, but can not being in church cause you to lose your salvation? Okay. Well, I, they, I, they, I, they sound like the same question, but they're not. So, okay. So, uh, and, and in fact, let me try to rephrase what you just said. So you're saying that the question as opposed to does God save you? I mean, sorry, does church save you is can you lose your salvation if you don't go to church? Yes. Okay, that's, that's interesting. What about you, Jason? What do you think? Well, uh, does does have, church save I that? see this, I honestly see this from a different point because the question is, can church save me, right? Right. Well, I honestly think to start off, we have to first address what is church. Because if you study the Bible, you see one definition of church as to what maybe the public sees. Because if I, if I go to someone... Um, and I asked somebody like maybe some random person on the street, I'm pretty sure the majority of the times I'm going to be, I ask them, what is church? The majority of the times they are going to point me to a building. They're going to point me to an address mm -hmm. where there's a physical church building. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look in the Bible, we know that that's not the case. I can't, I can't think of the verse off the top of my head for some reason. I had it. I lost it, but I, I had, I don't know if you guys could help me, help me with this, um, so first, what's up? What are you thinking? I, I wanted to uh, interject just a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I know we wanted to get to the definition of faith, but I, I wanted to continue just this thought, right, before we get to the definition of faith, because I mean the faith, uh, definition of church. church. I think that's absolutely crucial, as Jason said. We church. have to understand the, defini the definition of church before we can start to get into this. But I, want, I wanted to make a point, if I can, really quickly, right? So the question was, does church save me, right? But I, I asked, I think a better question, can not being in church cause you to lose your salvation? And what, I'm, what, I, mean, what I mean about that is when we think about the Christian walk, the Christian faith, we got to, uh, uh, most of us know about the ripple effect, right? Hmm. But, you know, you toss a, a stone in, in the water, you see little ripples and, and uh, effects start to happen, right? Uh, there's this quote from Ellen White, right? And it says, how many of us decided Oh, sorry. The, the defects cherished in dealing with life's minor details pass into more important affairs. He acts on the principles to which he has accustomed himself. Thus, actions repeated from form habits, habits form character, and by the character of our, of our destiny for time and for the eternity is decided, right? 
the small habits. If we consider going to church a small habit, right, or something small. So the opposite is true in us not attending church, right, or going to being part of a church, right, we form a habit. And the idea that I want to say is how many of us have ever known someone or myself in my personal experience, right, where all of a sudden we say, you know what, I'm not going to go to Sabbath school this week. Hmm. And then and then all of a sudden next week's like, oh, you know what, I'm busy. I, you know, I'm not going to make it to Sabbath school. I'll, I'll make it to the sermon. And then all of a sudden, uh, two, three months down, you've given up Sabbath school. Right now, right. all of a sudden you stop going to church. You're like, oh, you know what? I got things to do. Right. All of a sudden, you know, you stop going to church. You stop making that a habit. And all of a sudden, a uh, year or two down the road, you're outside of church hanging with the wrong people, right, doing the wrong things and asking yourself, what happened to my spiritual life, right? What happened as a habit uh, uh, in my life, right? And I think that's what she points out right here, right? The repeated habits, habits form character, and by the character, our destiny for time and for eternity is decided, right? So a lot of times we look at uh, 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 this as a short term, right? When we think about the, the Christian experience, we think about something short term. But we've got to remember that the, the, the Christian walk is something that is long term, right? Uh, uh, Paul, in many places, he, write, he calls it uh, the, uh, a race, right? Run as if to win the race, right? And um, in Hebrews 11, the faith chapter, right? It talks about all these people that, that encountered different things, right? But they persevered, right? Uh, endurance, right? This is what uh, the Christian walk is all about. So I think the question then becomes, right, if we look back at that, at that verse that I said, for by grace, you have been saved through faith, right? So I think the new question then becomes, how much of church actually plays a role in that faith, in that faith by which we are saved? Yeah, fair, fair enough. We're getting way ahead of ourselves, though, because, because we're still trying to figure out this question if church has anything to do with my salvation. Um, and, and let me just say real quick, there's a phrase in the book of Jonah. It's an awesome phrase where he says, this is at the end of his prayer. He says, salvation is of the Lord. Okay. Salvation is of the Lord, which to me tells me that it is God who determines how one is saved, by which method one is saved, uh, and how you receive the message of salvation. All of it belongs to God, not to me, not by anything that I can do or that anyone can do. Um, and so, I just just to make sure we got a consensus on this because I think this is where where Jason was trying to go to. Um, can we say that that uh, church does not save you in the traditional way that we think of being saved? Exactly. Is that fair? Okay. Yes. Right. And and now that being said, let me just add one more thing in here uh, because Acts of the Apostles book written by Ellen White um, begins with a phrase that I've used many times. Okay. Uh, which, and this is the very fir first phrase of the book, Acts of the Apostles, which is going to talk about the early church. And it says, the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. All right, I I'm going to repeat that one more time. It's the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men, which means that salvation is of the Lord and we are saved by faith. That is true. But the church has a role to play in my salvation. The church cannot save me. Mm -hmm. God saves me. But there is a role that the church plays. And I, and I don't know that's where Jason was going with this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the yeah. point I was trying to get to because um, this is my way of thinking because I, even me in my experience, I was going to church. It's a physical church. I was there sitting in the sermon, all of this. But spiritually, there was nothing going on. I was just there listening. And maybe you guys even saw me like made like a long time ago and sometimes we even see it in church like i would just fall asleep hmm. like, i was just physically there i never saw that i never saw that <laughs> but believe. mentally mentally and spiritually i just wasn't there like 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 i was i just wasn't picking anything up like i would go to sabbath school i would uh go to uh, listen to the sermon and just nothing was coming to me i was going to church but there was no way that in the condition that I was at this at that point in time, there was no way that I was going to be saved because I didn't have a connection with God. Sure. So, so yeah. So um, I, I think we got to start exploring this idea of, of what role church plays in our salvation. And, and let me, let me share something that, that I've always found interesting. Uh, there's a moment in Matthew chapter 16 where um, Jesus comes and asks the disciples, 
uh, who do you believe I am, right? Or who do the people say I am? That's the first question. And then the second question is, who do you think I am? And at that moment, G uh, Peter confesses that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, right? Um, and immediately after, there's something interesting. And I and I, I know you guys have read this. I know all of those who are watching, by the way, welcome once again to everyone who is watching us right now um, and uh, who's watching us live. Uh, to uh, uh, Cassandra Lopez, we want to welcome. Uh, to Tracy Dane, i.e. Jessica, we also want to welcome as well, okay? Um, but but check this out, right? After Peter confesses this to Jesus, he says the following, right? He says, um, you know, this was revealed uh, not by man, but by, by, by the Father. And then he says, and I also say to you, I'm reading this, that you are Peter, and on this rock, and, and, he's, and Jesus speaking of himself, right? We're not going to get into that, but on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And this is the part that I find very interesting. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so the idea here, if we're following the stream of thought, is that the moment that the church is established, the kingdom of heaven is unlocked. By the same manner, depending on the actions of the church, the kingdom of heaven may be locked, right? And when Jesus says to Peter, fascinatingly enough, right? Jesus says to Peter, look, I'm gonna give you the keys. Peter is the first one, as we know in the book of Acts, to preach the gospel, right? In Acts mm -hmm. chapter two, after they receive the Holy Spirit, he preaches the gospel, which opens the door to salvation to all these Gentiles that never had it before. So Jesus establishes the church first, and then we enter into the kingdom of heaven, or all of us, right, have access to it, by the actions of the church and of the church leaders at that time. So there is no doubt about it, a role that the church plays in our salvation, if at least by opening the kingdom. Yeah. And, and that's the only thing I want to state with uh, uh, restating that question, you know, how much of, of church does it actually play in, in our, in our, in our faith, in our Christian walk? Mm -hmm. um, Jason, you were, I think, were you trying to define what church is? Yeah. Okay, well, let's look at that. How do we define church? Okay, there's a there's a text. I, I, I really, that's why I was asking if you guys can help me. I just can't recall what the what what text it was where it defines what Genesis one one. Is it Genesis one one? No, no, it's not Genesis one. <laughs> okay. Don't listen to this guy. Good guess. It's a good and guess. Actually, I wish I wish I could quote it because it was actually in a sermon that I heard directly from Pastor Mitch. You're gonna quote me on this? Oh yeah, man, I, I better know the verse. Like, it's bugging me that I can't remember the text. I'm in trouble. Okay. But it was um, it's basically stating that that the church isn't the physical building. Mm. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna summarize it because I can't I I really don't know where the text is. I'm gonna look it up and I'll I'll give it to you guys. I'll put it either in the I, comments. I got or... I got a text for you though to support that. If I okay. allow me to read this text uh, because I think it, it's an interesting one. This is First Corinthians eleven eighteen. Uh, don't lose your train of thought here. Uh -huh. But um, uh, Paul is writing and he says, "For first of all, when you come." together as a church i hear that there are divisions among you and in part i believe it and so the idea is that the church isn't the specific building right the church mm -hmm. is when the people are gathered or it is composed of people i'll read one more text uh, romans 16 5 uh he says likewise greet the church that is in their house so that is it's not the house that's the church. It's the people inside the house. Go, go ahead. That's ex that, that was the text I was thinking of, Romans. So that, that's the text, guys. Sorry about that. So it's, it's literally saying the church isn't the building. It's mm. not the physical place we go to. It's mm. the people. So now when we ask, is, can, the church, can the church save me? Mm. The physical building can't save me. Mm. But meeting with the people being mm. with the people in the church, going to church to meet with others, that's what case, play, that I feel that I understand plays a key role in our salvation. Mm. There's, a, there's a concept, and I've always said, I've said it at the youth groups, um, at the youth uh, at um, Ignite on Friday nights at the church and everything. There's a concept called saved by saving. And what does that imply? Saved by saving is sharing mm. your experience as a Christian with others. And one of the, what, sometimes like one of the most places, important places to do that is at church, because sometimes like we we forget that there's others just like us in church that are going through the same exact thing that I'm going through, the same exact struggle. But we just never speak out. We never find anybody. There's no the church. I, I feel like if the church sometimes 
the like the church management the church group management like it sometimes feels to have like support groups for certain oh. things because it's through those groups some people aren't just going to open up to anybody right and support groups specialize in that it could right. be either a support group for teens it could be a, a support group for adults for women for couples for whatever it is but it's something where everybody has something in common and they could talk about that in common. And it's a safe space where you could talk about that. And once you express your problems, then boom, idea. Oh, look, you could help. I could help you with this. You're like, boom, this could help you to take care of that. It's just that's that's where I feel that church has plays that key role in our salvation, because we have other people that either are going through the same thing or already went through it that can help us overcome whatever situation it is. OK. Yeah, uh, um, just to build on what you guys were saying, that's actually the, the verse that I wanted to mention, the one that Mitch was talking about. But uh, I, I think it's uh, uh, important, too, that we also define what is the church from, you know, uh, a non-biblical perspective so, so that we can understand this verse better. I looked up the, the, the Webster Church Diction, the Webster Dictionary definition of church, right, which says a building used for public Christian worship, right? You guys both met, mentioned building. Right. Mm-hmm. But we go back to that same verse you guys were talking about, uh, Romans 6, 3 through 5. Right. It says, likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Right. If we think about it as a building from the Webster Dictionary uh, a definition. Right. It, it would say, likewise, greet the building that is in their house. And, th- and that wouldn't make sense. Right. right. Uh, uh, I know you're the, the, the Greek expert. Right. Uh, Mitch, when we talk about uh, out of the group, out of the group, Ecclesia, right. Right. The, the, right. word, the, the word used for for church right and it's uh there's a word that that that's used in there called kaleo right that that's is right. derived from kaleo right the Greek so word let's, kaleo. Let, very, very quickly so it's uh two words right ek and kaleo um and ek means out or from right and kaleo means called so yeah. and, and the interesting thing that i found that when i was uh kind of going over this right uh called out right uh, uh assembly or congregation called out right uh ecclesia it kind of reminded me when I thought about those words called out, it reminded me of a verse in first Peter two, nine through 10, mm-hmm. right? As we're talking about the church, it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a mm-hmm. holy nation, his own special people that you may, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness mm-hmm. into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are the people of God who yeah. obtained, who had who not had not obtained the mercy, but have now obtained uh, mercy. So in essence, what we hear, it's almost, it's almost like we have the definition of what it means to be a church in this very verse, right? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. In essence, people who are called out, right? The church yeah. is God's own people, right? That's what it seems to, when it says here. And then another verse to even uh, uh, kind of emphasize that more, Hey, right. sorry, um, hey, sorry about that, by the way. My son just wanted to say hi to everybody. So uh, hi to everyone out there. I was seeing him. That's watching. Yeah, just uh, that, that's just the way it is. We're all at home. It is what it is. Yeah, uh, just to continue, um, in, in 1 Corinthians 1, 2, it says, To the church of God, which is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who, are, who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Again, emphasizing the point that the church is what? God's people, right? Those who are sanctified, right? Just kind of giving a little bit more emphasis to what we're talking about. So so um, this is very important, by the way, in the time that we're living right now, because people literally were freaking out the moment that we said we were suspending church services. Yes. And, and they were like, oh, you know what? Uh, where's our faith? Uh, you know, I, I had I had a, I had my moment of frustration with certain comments that were being said out there uh, because I felt that there was a misunderstanding of what it means when we say church. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm going to say this in a very uh, rough way, but I think it, it will make sense. Hey, the building can burn down. Who cares? Right. The building is the building. That means nothing in the context of a biblical church, because if the building breaks down, the church continues. If, if there's an earthquake and it just it crumbles down, the church continues because we keep focusing on a people, which which makes it very interesting. And I've, I've said this before. You guys may have heard this before, that it, it is it is wrong to say we are going to church. Right. We are going to meet with the church. We are going to the church building, but we are not going to church. Church goes with us if we are the people. 
right? It, wherever we go. I mean, right now it's the three of us. We're in, in different places. By definition, this would be church. It's church. Right. We got we're we got 23 people we're watching us live. Team. Yeah, we got 23 people watching us live. By definition, all of you here um are 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 part of church right now. Right now we are having church, right? Is that is that fair? Yeah, by biblical Great. definition, <laughs> we're on point. We're having church right now. We're having a church conversation. A, a, a church conversation. Now, um the the question I think leads to this. If we know that church is not a building and it's a and it's a people, why did Jesus institute the church? Why did Jesus establish the church? Oh, and, and by the way, we're not going to burn. If, if you happen to live at a church, we don't want to burn down your church. A comment just came in. We do not want to do that. All right. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but I'm just saying if it were to happen, uh, don't worry. We got your back for all those people who take care of churches. We got your back. We're a church. All right. We're, we're, we're going to make sure we, uh, we take care of you should that happen, but we don't want that to happen. I hope this is a show up on Twitter. It says, uh, burn down the church. Yes. Uh, uh, Mitch Pastor is, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm going to get quoted so bad on this. Like what? I, hopefully I won't become a meme. Um, so, so, le so let's ask this question, right? Um, what or why did Jesus institute the church? How do you guys see this, this question? Cause I think it's important uh, that we understand that Jesus did establish the church, right? Yeah, I think oh, because it's oh, a oh, common oh. ground for people of the same faith that believe in the same things to, to, to get together. Like even Jesus himself, he went to the synagogue because there was others that were worshiping the same God that in the same beliefs. And I think that's part of the reason why church was instituted as, as a thing, because like, I actually like one of um, Elias Montes's comment, he said, and um, he said, the church is not a museum of saints, but of hospital for sinners. And it goes on to say, I think it serves as a purpose of encouragement and of bouncing ideas. Okay. And that, that's the, 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 that really is what sums to it. We, we get together with, with others that believe the same thing. And it's just, it's kind of like, a, hey, look, I'm not the only one. Mm. I'm not the only one that believes this. And I'm not the only one that's going through struggles. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Andrew. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I think when we're talking about uh, why did Jesus institute the church, I think that's such a broad question. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we could we can go into so much about yeah. why Jesus instituted the church. And I just wrote a couple down for you guys just to uh, we can go on probably forever talking about why he instituted the church. Right. But just off the bat, right. Kind of going along with what you were saying, Mitch. Right. Uh, uh, Jesus passing down the keys. Right. Uh, to Peter, almost as if to say, right, what Jesus had established here in his resurrection, he was now passing down that to Peter, as in, as in to say, you continue this on, right, what I have established, right, and some of the things that I, I can think about, you know, why Jesus instituted the church, right, uh, the first one I have here is uh, sanctifying mankind, right, what do I mean by that, the Bible says, let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven, right? In other places we have, uh, you are the salt of the earth, right? In, in essence, uh, the, the church, right? In some, in some sense, right? We are supposed to be the light of the world, right? Kind of preserve uh, the world to some sense, right? Um, the second one I have here is building up the church, right? Uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, 27, it says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these church these in church first apostles second prophets uh third teachers and so on and so on right so we have different gifts right that we're supposed to use right in other places it says if you encourage then in, then encourage right if you get if you, your gift is giving then give generously all in accordance sure. with your faith so building up the church right everybody has different gifts not everybody has the same talents so we build one another up right that's the second one the third one um i thought this one was interesting uh uh uh, rendering worship to God, right? Pointing people to, to God, right? And, and uh, one of the verses that I, that I found here is uh, in uh, J uh, John 4, 19, right? When uh, the woman at the well, yes. I found it interesting because it says, the woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where you ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither uh, worship on this mountain nor in Jerusalem, right? You you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now and is now when the true worship will, sure, worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such worship to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him 
must worship in spirit, right? Uh, in, in practical terms, to me, it seemed like the woman at the well was almost like saying to Jesus, well, our church worships over here. Sure. You Jews say that the church is over there, but we were our church worships over here. And Jesus was almost saying, no, there's a time that's coming where a church is not going to be over there on that mountain he, or, or over here. Church are those that are going to be worshiping in spirit and truth, right? The people, right? So uh, rendering worship to God. And then the last one that, that I have is um, instruction, right? Uh, right? Preach the word, right? Be prepared in season and out of season, right? Correct, rebuke, and encourage, right? Instruction for the, uh, for the people of God. So, so I, I look at this in a, in a slightly different way. Um, and, and I think I, I agree with everything you just said right now. Um, but I, I want to look at it from the perspective of what comes down from heaven through church. Um, it, to, to me, the, the currency of God's kingdom is love, right? Uh, this is this is the 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 way God governs is through love. Uh, his law is love, um, and it, what God has done on this earth is love. Uh, Jesus turns out to be the epitome of what it means not only to love but to be loved, right? Um, and so, when Jesus establishes this, uh, to me, he's got a very interesting verse, a verse that all of you I know know in John chapter thirteen, verses thirty four through thirty five. Uh, where Jesus talks about a new commandment that he is giving his disciples. And, I, and I, I've always thought this is extremely important uh, because in that commandment, the requirement is to love one another. Now, you cannot love one another if you are by yourself. There is no such thing. It is not possible to love someone else if you are by yourself. Now, I've said the following. Okay, well, if if it's possible to love if, if the idea is to love one another, then why can't I just love within my family? But see, there's a problem with sticking to just this little circle of a family. Let's say in my case, my wife and my two kids, and I just say, I'm just going to have church here. That's not the way it works. I have a specific role to them as a father, my wife, as a mother to the kids. Um, we cannot be church members. We cannot be that church community because we have to step out of that uh, self family thinking, right? Because the moment that I just focus on my family, we're just thinking about ourselves. Church requires you to think of others. Think about that, right? Church requires you to think of people who are different to you. That is why, this is just my opinion, I could be totally wrong, but I believe that a Christian who refuses to go to church will be more selfish than a Christian who goes to church. Because if you don't go to church, you are not with the community. And if you're not with the community, how then do you share the things that you're supposed to share? Or as Jason was saying, right, bounce off the spiritual support that you need to bounce off or, or, or the encouragement. You can't do it by yourself. God's government requires there to be people. It's not a solo thing. It is not a lonely thing. It is not good for man to be alone. That is what we find in Genesis chapter 2. It is not good for humans to be alone. Church resolves that problem and allows us to uh, to keep the greatest commandment, which is to love God, and the next one, which is to love our neighbor. Both happen at church. Yeah, that's true. Um, actually, um, I actually even want to point out a text. Let me see, eighteen verse twenty. So Matthew eighteen verse twenty. So like sometimes we think like, okay, like why should I really go to church? Like, is it important for me to even go to church? And I believe. If you don't really go to church, if you're not congregating with others of the same faith, like you're kind of missing out on God in a very special way. And this is why I have this idea. Eight, uh, Matthew 18, verse 20. And it sure. says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Okay. And the, like God's with you all the time. But when you're there, when you're there worshiping God. When you, when you guys come together to worship God, he's even there in a very special way. Like he's, he says it right there. He's like, I will be in the midst of them. Mm. Like he's stating it himself. Like he's going to be there. Like that, uh, like there's things that if you don't go to church, if you don't, um, okay, excuse me, go to church meeting. Sure. You don't go to church. We go to the church meeting. If you don't go there, you're going to miss out on a lot of things that God can do for you. You're going to miss out on that. Sometimes Jason, like I feel, yes. Jason, let me, hold on. Let me, let me ask you, because I'm, I'm itching to ask you this. Would you say that that meeting with the church or going to a church service 
is a command by God? It is something that God requires of us? Oh, man, that's a tough question. But I mean... Come on, give, would, give me a yes or no. Give me a yes or no. I'm Come on. Say yes. I'm going okay. to say yes. I'm going to say yes based off that, based off of including that verse. Okay. It's a command, especially if something, why would Jesus tell you not to go somewhere worse or, or God tell you not to go somewhere where, um, that he did, that he instituted? If he started something, why would he tell you not to do it? Why would out of nowhere, he tell you, oh no, don't do that. Don't go to church. You don't need to go to church. Why would he do that? Why would he go back on his own word? God doesn't do that. Once he says something, he never, he doesn't retract from it. He, okay. so yeah, I, I I'm going to just say fully. You, 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 you would say, you have yeah, you would say yes. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, hold on. If I, if I could read this, can I, can I read something here? Okay. okay. Uh, Hebrews 10, 25, uh, I'll read verse 24 and let us consider one, one another in order to stir up love and good works. Hold on. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more, as you see the day approaching, let me, let me just put it this way. Do we think that's, that's a, that's a suggestion or is that God speaking through the Holy spirit, inspiring Paul to say, do not forsake the assembly of others, because I don't see that as an option I see that as a command. That's 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 what I'm reading here. No, I it's on point because once you start reading this, you see that this is the this is this is, we call it the word of God. Mm. And everything that's written here is inspired by God. So if it's inspired by God, that kind of makes that a commandment. Like God is telling you, like don't forget that. Mm. Yeah, um, I just wanted to to add to that. Right, um, it seems like we're going into what is the role of the, of of the church, church. right uh, now. Uh, but uh, I wanted to add to that. That's the exact same verse that I was going to mention, uh, Mitch. But uh, just wanted to add to what you guys were saying, right? Um, this idea, right? Uh, people have, um, you know, I don't need to go to church to have a relationship with God. How many of us have heard that before? Heard that. I'm right a, we've all heard that right so many and, videos on youtube that talk about that <laughs> yeah right and, and to a certain degree i agree with that but but what we're saying right and, and this is one of the verses that people try to try to use to justify themselves right and it's the one of the ones that we mentioned already right in matthew 18 20 right for well, wherever two or three are gathered in my name there i am with them right, right? Mm -hmm. this idea is like oh see the bible says that you know wherever two or three are gathered right uh, that see i don't have to go to church if there's two or three of us right thinking about the the webster definition of church right mm -hmm. not not the actual church right mm -hmm. so this is th this idea that they don't have to have uh, go to church to, to have a relationship with god uh, but I, one interesting thing that i actually found about this verse right is that many of the people when they quote this verse they're actually uh taking this out of context because this verse is actually if you ever read it it's actually talking about uh, uh dealing with sin in the church right uh jesus talking about establishing things by two or three witnesses right not to say that jesus is not with us or god's not with yeah. us when two or three of us are gathered but people use that to justify not going to church and i think it's wrong and it's exactly what you were saying right uh mitch uh, uh in hebrews 10 23 right to stir up love and good works not forsaking assembling meeting what meeting up with one another right i think this is important right it's it, and especially when we look at um the the the, the greek word for love mm. right the agape right mm. it's not using the, any other uh, greek word you know eros phileo uh storge right mm. it's using the word agape meaning unconditional love when mm. you look at that word right unconditional how easy is it for you to love your brother that's next to you how easy is it for you to love your mom or or your sister or whoever's with you right it you know, it's easy yeah, to love yeah, that, we say, we but say, when you bring it say, into a, huh? and we say, we say that, uh, with brothers and sisters, like in our own home, uh, we are required to love. There is no option, but to love. Right. <laughs> uh, but when it comes to church, sometimes that's optional. Like, I don't know if I'm going to love my brother in Christ or my sister in Christ. And, and I think that this, this love, right. Or, or as we're putting it right is requires us mm -hmm. to practice that love, right. Mm -hmm. In a place where not everybody agrees with us in a place where people are, let's be honest at church sometimes you know people don't like you you know and, and you know and um you know you have problems with people whatever you say you know it causes you to practice that love that unconditional love mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I wanted I wanted just to uh, kind of uh, take a step back real quick uh, and just uh, piggyback off of what Jason said uh, with all these YouTube videos. And I remember there was one YouTube video that went viral, went I mean, yeah, crazy viral. I, I think I already know which one. You're uh, yeah, doing. and he, and I forgot what the guy's name is because why I love religion, popular. why I hate religion but love Jesus. Yeah, why I love Jesus and I hate and, but hate religion. Yeah, um, and. <laughs> And I, I it, and it's very interesting because it got, I mean, talking about um, a video that went viral and went millions and millions and millions of views, right? Um, and made me wonder and question if there is a difference between church and religion. Now, we, we have to look at this for a second because I think that a lot of our young people who are deciding to leave church, leave it not for the original purposes of why church was established, mm -hmm. not, not in, not in seeing what Jesus initially intended for church to be, but they're setting their eyes on something different. And we talked about why young people leave the church last week. Right. But, but now this question of religion comes up and, and, and so I wanted to see if we could explore this just a little bit. Right. Do you guys see a difference between church and religion? I think I think we we've kind of if we establish the definition of church the way we have that it is a people and not a place, then religion is related to it, but it's not the same, right? What, what, how do you how do you guys see this? Um, what is the difference between uh, uh, church and religion? And by the way, before you guys answer this uh, again, we just want to make sure we give a shout out to all those who are watching us live at this moment. If you're watching us afterwards, again, thank you for joining us. Um, if there are any questions, any comments, we do want you to be part of the conversation. Everybody's kind of quiet today. Okay. Yeah, Master, kind of quiet. Master Chief, we want that. We want a question, Master Chief. Ma Master Chief. Yeah. Uh, so, so if, if there is something, a uh, question, we want to make sure we integrate it. We don't have all evening, but we want to make sure that, that we get your comments in here. So let's go back. Church, religion. How do you guys see this? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think it's important, right. When we're, when we're looking at this, right. And that, Sorry, that I could. Yeah, yeah, you could have off. You could have off. Go for it, Jason. Go for it, Jason. Go for it. Go for it. I can't. I can't tell who's who's speaking. No, no, just go, bro. Just go. You're yeah. speaking. Hey, now I feel horrible. First, the first will be last, and the last will be first. Let's go. Who wants to be first? Who wants to be last? <laughs> Jason, Jason, let let's hear what what uh, uh, church and religion. Okay, I I there's to me there's a difference. There's a clear difference. And I, I've even spoken, we've spoken about this religion, no matter what religion it is, a lot of it has a lot of tradition, something that's man-made. Mm. And that's what a lot of people focus on. They focus on like, oh, there's traditions, this, this tradition doesn't, doesn't go with the Bible, this and this and this. So they completely throw out the idea of going to a physical church to congregate with certain people because they don't agree with a certain tradition, a religious tradition that they uphold. Okay. So to me, there's a, there's a clear difference between what, what is, what is religion and what is, um, and what is church as the Bible dictates it. And off that video that we we're talking about that went viral, that's something that, that, uh, that, the, that he focuses on. He kind of, mm -hmm. the guy kind of focuses on all the faults of religion, but he okay. doesn't focus on all the good sides of being part of a church as in like, like a, like what we're having right now. Like the biblical church, he doesn't focus on none of that. He just focuses on focuses on all the all the the reasons why you shouldn't go to church because there's people that are selfish because there's people or more like the reasons why people leave the church because they have problems with what church members do. Sure. Now, now, to, but to be to be fair, his point isn't not to go to church, right? Yeah, I, mean, it's I not, just want to be fair on that. Church. Uh, that that video uh, should any of you have watched it, right? <laughs> um, that video was was mainly differentiating between what Jesus established and religion, right? And mm. that's just something man-made. And literally he says it's something man-made, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but it's that's what it is. It's man-made. And that's another point. Like a, lo a lot of people see, all they see is like, oh, religion's man-made. I don't have to to like, to like go to church because it's all man-made. They just figure out that everything is man-made. Sure. Like, I, okay, I get it. Let yourself be dictated by the Bible, sure. but the Bible is going to lead you to the truth. And based on your beliefs, you're going to go to a church, to a physical church where the congregation believes the same things that you're picking up off the Bible. Sure. Perfect. Uh, Andrew, before you start answering this, I just want to bring in these comments because I think they're good. Um, Elias is writing and says that uh, religion to him is the adherence to a set of doctrines and ideology. And the church is a group of people, as we've defined, that follow Christ regardless of the nitty gritty. 
Um, I'm assuming those are the details of religion. Um, and uh, Jaylene writes that sometimes as church members, we confuse church with religion and we forget what the true meaning of church and religion is. And that can misguide us on our path, right? Like take us off on our path. What, what say you, Andrew? Yeah, uh, church and religion? Yeah. Um, I think the, the problem begins with um, wh- the, the reason why we have so much uh, problems with this is because we have these other, these Webster dictionary definitions, right? When we actually look at, at what these things actually mean biblically, I think we can start to see that it starts to change, right? Um, we said that a church is a building used for a public Christian worship, right? And if we use the Webster Dictionary of, of, uh, of, of religion, then that would mean the act of worship in that building. So we have the church, which is the physical public, the physical building, and religion, the act of worship that happens in that building. And the problem when, comes when we reduce it to merely those two things, right? When we, when we reduce it mere to those two things, you know, I, I was reading this um, this article that I had mentioned a long time ago, right, where this thing, right, us as Westerners, right, we have this thing where we bifurcate religion, mm-hmm. right, where uh, us, everywhere else in the entire world, where it's China, you know, India, everywhere else, um, religion, uh, uh, religion uh, is is one. How would you say religion and, 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 um, and church is one? They're like, they're like a unit. They're like a unit. They're a unit. You don't separate the two, right? But okay. here we have this thing where as Westerners, right? And it comes from this idea that it's the building, right? That is the place of worship. So all of a sudden, when we leave that building, what happens? We stop worshiping, sure. right? We stop, right? Living out our religion, right? Mm-hmm. What happens when we leave the building? And that's what happens when we have that Webster de- definition of church, right? Mm-hmm. Because all of a sudden, uh, once we leave that building, there goes our religion as well. This idea that right. as Westerners, right, seven, uh, five days out of the week, you know, we can do whatever we want. But when it comes to uh, Sabbath, well, all of a sudden we come out with our shirt and with our, 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 our ties and our suits. And right. So we have this idea. And I think it comes down to those those definitions. But if we look at what religion actually means, right, James 1 20 says it, uh, 127 puts it perfectly. Right. It says, Pure and undefiled religion is this before God, right? To visit orphans and widows in their trouble and Mm. to keep oneself unspotted from the world, right? Um, So now we take the definition of church, the biblical definition of church, which is what? The people of God, right? And now we see religion, pure undefiled religion. And it says to visit orphans, widows in trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world. That sounds like a lot what jesus said right visit the orphans and the widows in their trouble that right. sounds like his uh um what, what is his proclamation right when he he reads a scroll from isaiah right that sounds like a lot what he talks to uh when it says keep oneself spotted from the world that sounds a lot like what he says when he says you know if you were of the world they would love you but mm. because you you are not they hate you right and, and paul puts it do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so this to me is telling me that religion is something completely different right it seems to me that church right the people of god and then this is almost like the mandate right or the proclamation that jesus gives to his church so religion is more of a a a a a proclamation for his people right to do these things yeah in fact uh just just going off of that text that you just read james 127 the word for religion because it is a biblical word um very rare by the way uh, I think it only appears like less than five times in the New Testament, uh, but the word is threskeia. Um, and what that means is ritualistic acts of worship. And so uh, when when James says, look, this is the pure undefiled religion, these are the pure undefiled relig- relig- ritualistic acts of worship, that means that there is a pure and undefiled way of doing things. And there is an impure and defiled way of doing things. And so we have to distinguish very, very clearly that there is good religion and there is bad religion, right? There, there is pure religion. There is impure religion. There is defiled religion and undefiled religion. And God wants us to be religious, but he wants us to practice religious, religiously in the way that he has established in his word. Yeah. And, and just, to, just to, to add to that, I want to add a quote from... Uh from Ellen White, from Desire of Ages, right, to this whole idea of bifurcation, how we separate uh, religion and life, right? Mm -hmm. But 
uh, to the rest of the world, that is one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 in Desire of Ages, it says this about Jesus. It says, instead of secluding himself in a hermit's cell in order to show his heavenly character, he labored earnestly for humanity. He inculcated the principle of he inculcated the principle that Bible religion does not consist in the mortification of the body. He taught that the pure and undefiled religion is not meant only for set times and special occasions. At all times and in all places, he manifested a loving interest in men and shed about him the light of cheerful piety. So, okay. So, uh, but so let me ask you guys this. I, I cause I'm, I, this is, I'm again, just thinking off the top of my head. Um, so is religion a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I, I think uh, if we look at the biblical definition of, of, uh, of religion, what James describes it as, I think that's a really good thing. But if okay. we take the, the Webster definition, then, then I think that, no. Okay. I think um, that it can be, uh, uh, like, uh, Jason said, tradition, uh, based on tradition, uh, you know, uh, ritualistic, like you said. Sure. No, yeah, I, I, I think it's a good thing if, 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 if it's like through the biblical definition, it's not sure. a bad thing, but it, like you said, there, there's, if we base it off of that, there's good religion and there's bad religion. And we really have, we, we have to pray and we have to like earnestly study the Bible sure. to be able to, to, to get to that type of discernment. Because if we're, if, we're, if we're just allow if we just allow ourselves to be guided by what we hear and not necessarily by what we read in the Bible, our discernment's going to be at times off. It's going to be off, and yeah. we're going to think we're doing something correct just because everybody's doing it, rather than being guided by by the principles in the Bible. Yeah, let, let me let me uh, let me be very practical when it comes to this because this is a sticking point for me, uh, especially in my position as a pastor, right? Um, I, I find it very difficult at times to have conversations with people who see absolutely no difference between what is church and what is religion, right? Um, in other words, what is church and what is the ritualistic acts of worship? I believe that the ritualistic acts of worship can vary from congregation to congregation. What cannot vary are the principles that guide those ritualistic acts of worship. So mm -hmm. as an example, right? Uh, one church worships a certain way, another church worships another way. Now, as long as they are within the principles that God established in his word, we're fine. There is no one specific way of doing this. We do know James 1.27 says pure undefiled religion means helping others and, and living a holy life, which means, again, same concept that Jesus establishes, which is love God, love your neighbor, right? Holiness and, and taking care of other people. But, but once we step outside of that, we have to distinguish what is uh, a principle that God has established in his word. And then we have to distinguish these other things that we consider church, again, that we do inside the building, Andrew, right? That we do inside yeah. the building. And we say, oh yeah, this is church. So uh, all of a sudden I was having a conversation with somebody and uh, we were talking about maybe changing up our, our morning service on Sabbath, right? The 11, 12 o'clock service. And someone's like, no, we can't do that because that's the way we do things at church. Nonsense. That's not the way it works. Okay. Uh, we can change things as long as the church is in agreement and it will edify the church. But there is no one way of doing things. Like the moment that we think there is only one way of doing things, we're now putting these man-made ritualistic acts of worship over what God has established. The only one way of doing things is what the Bible says. Everything else is additional. That is my opinion. That is the way I see things. And that's why, uh, at least at my church, you know, I've, I've, I mentioned this to a lot of the young people. I say, look, we're open to doing whatever we need to do as long as we remain orthodox. That is in the, in the correct doctrine, right? If we remain within the correct doctrine, let's do it. No, yeah, and th that, that's, a, that's a very clear point because I have yet to go to a church that does things the same everywhere because like a, a high desert bilingual one something basic mm. sabbath school then sermon but then i go to another church and they're saying oh no the the your your main thing is a sermon and then sabbath school after when i when i went when i was lived in vegas that's how it was we all went to church first like the church sermon we heard the sermon first and then we all split off into sabbath school yeah but it's all covering the same thing 
it was yeah. just done in a different format. And uh, it's, it's that as long as it sticks to the biblical principles, as long as it's still teaching the truth, sure. there, there, there is no specific way of doing things. There's no, there's no, there's no guidelines in the Bible. Like, Oh no, you have to have Coritos first. Oh no, you have to have this type of worship. first. You have sure. to do this prayer first. And sure. then you could do the sermon. There is sure. no way to do that. Sure. Just, and, and, and let me and let me say this, Jason, just because a question came in right here. I, I don't know if you can see this, but I think it's a very good question, right? Uh, the idea is so long as the principles and worship is pure, there can be many types of traditions and methodologies, such as in drums, dance, and contemporary music. Let's separate what we're trying to say right now, okay? When we talk about ritualistic acts of worship, let's let's specifically say what the Bible tells Christians we should do ritualistically. Right. We know we're supposed to take communion because Jesus mm -hmm. told us to do so. We know we're, supp we're supposed to wash our feet because Jesus told us to do so. And we know we are supposed to uh, participate of baptism because Jesus told us to do so. Now, where in the Bible do I get this idea of music or that music has to begin? Look, this is how we do things. You know, uh, we sing first and then all the officials walk up in the front. That, that's not in scripture, by the way, that is a third century production when the church and the state combine together. Okay. If you go back to the third century, that's when these things started happening. Now I'm not saying those are bad. Let me, let me just be clear. Okay. I have no problems with those. All I'm trying to say is let's distinguish things and that the principles that are established in God's word go above and guide everything else that we do. So in regards to drums, in regards to dance and contemporary music, all I would say is, what is the principle of worship that God establishes? If there is a principle of worship, that is what is going to guide whether or not you use a drum, whether or not you dance or you listen to contemporary music. That's what we're trying to say, which by the way, we're not going to get into the contemporary yeah. music because that's a whole different subject. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to, I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. The, the mute, that whole music one, that's going to have to be for a whole, a whole nother. Uh, we're going to have to have a right? separate conversation. But, yeah. Uh, nonetheless, we're going to cover but, it eventually, yeah. but yeah. But I wanted to uh, mention just to kind of piggyback off what you guys were saying. Right. I think uh, the, I guess the gist of everything is that once the, the, like you said, the rituals or the tradition, uh, uh, go above the principles of the Bible or the principles of God, that's where we start to have a problem. You know, there's a scripture, uh, I forget where it's located, but it's, um, right, uh, it's in the Gospels, right, when the, the, the disciples are thinking back to what yeah. Jesus said, right? He yeah. said, zeal for your household will consume me. Mm. In mm. essence, what he's saying is all these practices, all these traditions, all these things, right, or the temple, you know, or, or all these things that we put so much emphasis, right, if, if, if it comes to the point where you can no longer see Jesus, right? Because there's so much focus on the tradition, on the culture, on how we do this. If, if it's hard to see Jesus in that, that's when I, I think it starts to become a problem. When that stuff starts to overcloud the message or, or yeah. uh, you know, or the gospel itself. And that, that's, exa that's exactly one of the messages like of Jesus that he was trying to like spread around in his days. Because if we look at the Pharisees and everybody that was involved in the synagogue, everything was ritualistic you couldn't walk certain days on set certain steps on sabbath like there was so many rituals that everybody forgot the essence of what it what it was to know to know god what it was to talk about god now jesus came and he's like hey i'm gonna heal on the sabbath it's good i'm doing god's will i'm gonna heal like I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to others on the i'm gonna i'm gonna walk around and talk to others about god on the sabbath like they they were so uh lost in their own um, religious way of doing things that they forgot what the Bible was, what their, what, what the Torah was really trying to teach them. They right. completely forgot about that. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think that that's a very good example of what happens when the rituals take over mm -hmm. principles and aside, I mean, look, uh, just as an example, right. If we do something, in our ritualistic way of doing things, which by the way, is not a bad, it, it, I'm, and let yeah. me be clear again, rituals are not a bad thing. I think rituals are an important thing in practicing commitment to God, right? Um, and, and I think traditions are also a good thing in be, being able to pass down values from generation to generation. I think that's important. But I do think that there comes a moment where uh, if there is a principle, for example, let's just say the Bible wants us to be united, right? That is clear. Um, that is a principle. Unity is a principle in scripture that must be manifested among Christians. If all of a sudden 
the way we do things when we get together as a church starts dividing the church, we have a problem. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a, a very uh, uh, a very common example that happens. I'm going to speak of Hispanic churches, right? But El Arbolito de Navidad, right? Mm -hmm. the, the little Christmas tree. Like every single year we have the same argument. Now, this has always been my point of view. If this is going to split the church, stop it. Stop it. Don't try to force something on a group of people that all it's going to do is break up the church. We should be striving for unity over a Christmas tree. Like, like that's like that's bottom line, right? Unity is greater than where the Christmas tree is going to be placed. And so when, when all of a sudden that becomes a contentious issue, I go back to what Paul says, right? He says, look, you guys got to start thinking of others before you think of yourself. Consider others greater than you, than yourself. So I got to start thinking, how is this going to affect my brother, my sister? You know, how is, going, how is this going to affect my congregation? Is it going to be a problem? And if it is, we got to stop that because there's a principle that requires me to be united, right? Um, and, and that's important. Um, but let me, let me uh, segue this because we got to start uh, wrapping this up. Yeah. Um, and this is something that I think, Andrew, you've been trying to get back to. What role does the church play in, in faith development? Because we know we are saved by faith, right? You established that at the very beginning. I thought I thought you said it very, very good. So uh, what role does it play? Well, I, mean, I think I, I touched on most of the things that I, I want to, to change, uh, that I want to touch on. Um, uh, yeah, I had already touched on one. one. Okay. I'll say okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me, let me, uh, Jason, I don't know if you want to, if you want to just answer that a little bit, uh, just kind of starting to wrap things up. No, yeah, just to reach it, yeah. like, how how can it um, sure. work on our faith development? And it's the same thing when you when you get together with someone. It could be like it could be even anything else. Like like me, I, I'm a big sports fan. I'm a, I love soccer. So when I when I get together together with other what's guys, your, what's like your favorite soccer, team? What's your favorite team, Jason? Dude, uh, we might get other, okay. I'll I'll say my favorite English team. All right, that's fine. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Liverpool fan. Everybody that knows me knows that I like Liverpool. <laughs> Sorry for those that don't agree, but I, I like Liverpool. It's all, it's all, it's all about uh, Man City, but <laughs> okay, keep going, keep going. Well, um, well, like if I get together with those guys, we're going to talk about soccer. Maybe if I didn't know how to do uh, or I didn't know about a certain team or I didn't know about a certain player, they're going to bring it up to me. And mm. it's kind of the same thing in church. Mm. When, you get to, when you get together for church meeting, when you get together with others of the same faith, and you pr you tell them about your your experience as a Christian. They tell you about it. They tell you what's what they're struggling with. There's gonna be some the, the, there's gonna be some type of some or someone's gonna help you with that. And um, maybe you didn't understand a certain thing about the Bible. That person does, and they explain it to you. And it makes sense. Now you you are enlightened. Now you come to a truth that you didn't know. And that's mm -hmm. part of part of going to church. Part of being part of a church. Sure. You start sure. learning things that you didn't know. You start experiencing things that, that you didn't know. And then also on top of that, once you start doing that, once you start um, and like congregating with others, then comes the concept of save by saving. You experience all these things. You experience Jesus in your life as well. You want to share it to others. You want them to be part of that church. Hmm. Not, I'm not talking about religion here, guys. I'm talking about church, like meeting with others that have the same faith as you. They share the same, the same, the same beliefs as you. You want, hey, look, this is what I learned. This is what Jesus has done for me. I want you to know about him too. Like I want to, I want, I want you to learn who Jesus is. Sure, sure. Um, in fact, I'm going to bring in a comment here that Dan says, um, uh, Dan Huerta, uh, which is, uh, it sounds, he says, it sounds like this is an issue of how to acquire spiritual discernment, and and I agree. Mm -hmm. I think when when we talk about uh, church, this is what it's about. Um, Andrew, you mentioned a verse that I'm going to read real quick, uh, it, which was Ephesians chapter four. And it, in there, he outlines why God equips the church, right? Why Jesus equips the church. And in verse 12, this is Ephesians 4, 12. He begins by saying for the equipping, uh, uh, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Uh, so uh, in church, we are equipped to go and serve others or saved by saving as, uh, as Jason was saying, right? Um, for the edifying of the body of Christ through church, we edify ourselves, right? The entire body gets better and better um, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of God. Church 
makes us closer, unites us, right? Um, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. You were talking about that at the beginning, Andrew, mm -hmm. right? This idea that uh, correct doctrine, we, uh, to, um, Paul says this to Timothy, right? Look, at your church, you got to make sure that you are teaching correct doctrine. So these are all the benefits that happen when we congregate together as church. If we don't have those things, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. I find it very difficult if we do not meet how you can be united as a church. By the way, I don't know if people know this, but uh, the people that uh, go to your church building, you, you, the people who you consider your church, those are the people you're going to be spending eternity with. You ready to spend all of eternal life with these people? You better start getting used to it. You know how you get used to it? Go to church. Go. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a text, and I'm actually gonna quote Pastor Mitch on this again. <laughs> <laughs> um, like uh, the Bible actually gives us of certain characteristics that a church should have, mm. like a church congregation should have. Um, now let's go to it's a, I found it's found in Ephesians chapter five, starting at verse twenty six. Well, technically 25, but it, says, it starts saying, verse 25 starts saying, husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, mm -hmm. that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing by the word, by a washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or anything or any such thing, but that she should be holy without blemish. Mm -hmm. What are some characteristics that, that, that it's saying? Um, it's saying that the church should be sanctified. Sure. It should be clean. It, um, it should be glorious without a spot or wrinkle. That it should be holy. Now, it's we just we just have to look at some of the some of those words like just sanctified. Like we're not sanctified ourselves, but this is more so saying Paul right here is more so saying that these are the things that we should aim to be as a church. Mm -hmm. We should. And since, since we earlier said that the church is ourselves, that the people make up the church. Mm -hmm. If that's what, if, if that's what we're clearly understanding from the word, if we're the church, then that's how we should aim to be. A lot of people don't go to church. A lot of people try to leave church because they're just looking at the people that constitute the church. The, like Mitch was saying earlier, the members, and if like we have to be like he was saying, like, do you really want to spend eternity with those members of your church? The thing is that if we're all aiming towards this goal to be clear, to be pure, to be sanctified, it's going to be more than easy for me to spend my eternity with that church member. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's and, and just, more than just, easy. And but that that's something that we have to understand that this is the goal. That is to be like that. This mm -hmm. should, this should be our aim. Yeah, and just to add to that, right? You know. The Bible said, just as the, the husband is the, the head of the wife, Christ is the head of the church, right? If Christ is the head of the church, right? And, and like we're saying, if Jesus, God, is his main attribute is love, right? Then this idea that that we are his church, we are his holy people, we are the ones that are supposed to be showing that love to ever, to the entire world, right? We are the, supposed to be the embodiment of what love is to the entire world. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, by the way, I, I, I'm a firm believer that church will not save you, uh, but you cannot be saved unless you're part of the church. Uh, because Jesus is coming back for his church. For his church. He's coming back for church. That's what he's coming back for, right? And I think that there will be some that'll leave. Uh, Andrew, you look like you got really excited there. You wanted to say something. No, I, <laughs> I was going to say something, but... I, okay, no, but, let, no, but let's... I would ask you, is, is church optional? Uh, yeah, well, look, I already said that to you guys before, uh, earlier. I, I I do not believe that church is optional. I believe that you uh, must come to church. You but, you know, to. people are going to say, oh, look, it's the pastor speaking, whatever, right? He wants people to go to church. I just don't see it optional. Hebrews 10 tells me that it is not optional. It is a command. We are not to forsake the assembly of others. That, that to me, is clear. And it go, all goes back to the issue of discernment. Like a lot of people are like, oh, what church, what physical church building should I go to? Then they started deciding like, oh, what religion, this and this and that, what denomination? Read this. Mm. This is going to guide you to that earnest study of the Bible and earnest prayer fully, full heartedly. It's going to lead you to, to, to decide where you should congregate, to which congregation to belong to. That's, that's really what it is. Yeah. 
God isn't going to lead you somewhere. And I've said it before in another one of our conversations, God isn't going to lead you somewhere where he knows you're not going to grow spiritual. He's not going to grow you somewhere where he knows that you don't, you're not going to belong. Mm -hmm. That's going to leave you. That's going to lead you far from him. He's going to lead you. If you're looking at it, look, searching for him out of your whole heart, he's going to lead you to the correct church, to the correct yeah. congregation. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just to add to, uh, to what Mitchell was saying, Mitch is not saying that that church is mandatory, like that we're going to go over here and uh, do a church and state and we're going to, we're going to do a mandate, right? Everyone has to go to church, right? <laughs> oh, what I meant is that uh, is church optional? Yes, church is optional. You, you don't have to go to church, right? right. But right. then I would ask people, is salvation optional? Correct. That's optional. Right. That's optional as well, right? Right. God, God's not, God's not going to force you to go to church. No, exactly. But, but if you are going to adhere to what God commands, you got to go. Um, let, let's, let's finish up with this. Uh, and again, we want to thank everybody that's joined us so far. Uh, we really appreciate your support and all the comments that have come in. Um, people on the chat right now are really excited for spending eternity with each other. So, you know, this is, this is great. Um, <laughs> but, but let's finish with this final question. Um, if a young person is thinking like, man, I can't wait. Let's say they're underage and they're thinking, I can't wait until I turn 18 and I'm gone. I don't want to go to church anymore. Uh, or someone who is older than that, right? And it's just weighing the options. It's just thinking, man, should I keep going? Should I not keep going? What advice would you tell young people um, uh, about going to church, about assisting uh, and, and congregating with the church? Let's, let's, start, let's start with uh, Andrew. Let's start there. Yeah, um, I, I would kind of go off the same thing, uh, piggyback off of the same thing that I said last week, but uh, kind of we're talking about today, right? If, you know, I would just say to that young person, you know, if, if church up until this point have just been an experience where, you know, five days out of the week, you've just done whatever you wanted. And then on, on, on Sabbath day, you came, right? Because you were forced by your parents, right? Don't really want to be there, but you come in a suit and tie. And, and church is this experience where, you know, uh, it's just a burden to you right, to come to church, right, uh, you know, I, I would encourage you, once again, like, like I said last time, you know, just to um, search, search for God, right, and, and, and like we've been kind of defining the things here, you know, what it really means to, to, to be a part of a church, and, and what that role is, and, and kind of find out these things for yourself firsthand, right, because right here, we have all, the, we have all the answers, we have all these things that we look at doctrinally, right, but just make this practical, you know, Allow this to be uh, something that is part of your Christian experience, right? And not just words on a page, but, you know, just, just truly see God and, and, and get away from that, that Westerner point of view, right, of, of separating religion and life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're true followers of Jesus Christ. Religion and life are one. Right, right. Jason, what, what final advice would you give to someone about, about going to church? I'll, if, if they're deciding, like, they're still choosing, like, whether it should stay or not, I would, honestly, I would say pray about it. Yeah. Pray because I've said it before and I'm just, it's just a, that's just how it works. Pray about it. And God is not going to guide you somewhere. He doesn't want you to be. He's not. If you're, if you're really struggling with the fact of, Hey, should I stay at the church that I'm at? Should I keep on congregating where I do pray about it? If, if God, he's just, God's just not going to give you a wrong answer. He's not going to, he, I like, I'm just a true believer of that because it's, it's my personal experience like that. God isn't going to lead you somewhere. You're not supposed to be. If he, if you're going somewhere where you're not supposed to be, God is going to give you all the red flags sure. and he's going to throw all the signs in your way to tell you to turn around, sure. but it is your choice to choose it. Mm -hmm. He's going to give you all the answers, but it is your choice. It is your option whether to stay in church or tonight, no matter what God gives you, no matter what he throws your way to make you go the other way. If you decide not to, yeah. that's your decision. Yeah. God isn't going to force you to it, but just pray about it. He will guide you in the correct way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there, there are a couple of final questions coming in. We got maybe like about five minutes left. Um, but um, uh, uh, there's the question about church hopping. Is church hopping a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, when, when is it bad to church hop? Um, and, uh, and I think I, I and this is what I was going to say as my final advice, right? Uh, I think we sometimes set our eyes on the wrong thing when we talk about church. Um, we got to stop setting our eyes on people and we got to start setting our eyes on what Jesus wants us to be within that church. I do find that 
um, it's a challenge, in my opinion, um, to church hop and develop community. Hmm. And what we see in the New Testament is that community is developed, not church hopping. The only person that ever church hops is the evangelist who's out there, you know, preaching the gospel in different places. Now, I'm not saying don't visit another church. That's definitely not what I'm saying. But in, in that train of thought, I would just say that you got to find the right community for you. Now, truth is very important and truth is above all things, right? Um, and as Jason said, uh, if you want to know which is the right church to go to or, or, or who has the, the, right, the right thing, you know, hey, take out your Bible and, and, and read and what it says, right? And, you know, one of the things that joins us as Seventh-day Adventists is that we believe that uh, the Sabbath was established in creation, was reaffirmed before the Exodus chapter 20, uh, Ten Commandments. It's uh, reaffirmed again in Exodus chapter 20. Um, it's affirmed once again by Jesus, and it is not changed by the apostles um, in the New Testament. And so uh, you say, well, Seventh-day Adventist church, but the interesting thing about Seventh-day Adventist churches is that there is a great variety of different churches out there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to me, you got to find a place that will help you develop community. And, mm -hmm. and, and once you have found that place, the greatest spiritual benefits happen, as, uh, as Elias had mentioned, right? Weekly, when you meet with these people and you talk about your week and, and you see how things have been going and you pray for each other and, and you're there through the struggles and you're there through the ups and you're there through the downs, that is how you truly become united. You cannot do that by church hopping, by the way. That's it, almost impossible to do because you need to develop relationships and church is the perfect place to develop a relationship with God and to develop a relationship with my fellow man. Right. Um, and I think that's important, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. And going to that, that point, you know, the, I think the, you know, not to get to whoever answered the question, right. That whole uh, church hopping, I think it kind of uh, the question, right. Is it okay to church hop kind of tells me about, well, whoever is church hopping a little bit tells me a little bit about, you know, their state of mind, right. It, uh, a lot of times when we, we're looking for churches, right. Like you said, we want something that fits us, right. And of course, we're going to look for something that fits us, but there is no perfect church. There is no perfect uh, anything, right, or, or environment. So I think the question should be is where can I do the best that I can, right, for the church? You know, where can I use my gifts the most to be able to help the church as opposed to what can the church do for me? What can I do for the church? I think I think there's a give and take, though, right? I mean, yeah, you also absolutely. have to find a place that allows yeah. you to develop so spiritually. Right, exactly. And then, but, but we should always be thinking, what can I give as exactly. opposed to what I can exactly. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, there, there was one final question here about church discipline and sanctioning. We are not going to go into that question. That, hey, that wasn't very, Master Chief, was it? It was not Master Chief. <laughs> no, not Master Chief. But, but that was a, that's a very, very fascinating question. And I think we're going to have to revisit that in the future. Yeah. Uh, what do we make of that? Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but uh, today's probably not the day and we wouldn't have time to answer that. Um, it's a broad topic. Yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just so all of you know, we want to keep this up. Uh, we want, again, we thank you for all your support. Um, we want to keep this up weekly, at least during the quarantine. Once the quarantine is done, we're going to try to figure out what to do, but we want to keep these conversations going. Um, and, uh, we've, uh, we've, we've decided that at least weekly, we're going to try to do this. And for now, it'll probably be at 4 PM. Uh, eventually we're going to try to find new avenues and trying to make sure that this message reaches all of you. Uh, but we want to thank you, uh, for just joining us, for being live with us and for sticking around with us for an hour and 20 minutes. Cause that's how long we've been talking. So, um, uh, with that, uh, we're, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Jason, Andrew, once again, thank you guys so much, uh, for, uh, for talking to me. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I talked to my wife and I talked to my kids. Uh, but it's nice to talk to people, you know, outside of this house. Uh, I'm just kidding. I, I talk to people outside of the house, right? Uh, but it, it, it's good to have this conversation. Um, and just so you know, the meme has already been released. I already received a text oh. message saying that I said, burn down the churches. Okay. So hey, hey, send me that meme, whoever, whoever created I, that one. No, I'm, I'm trying to block it's it. Going viral. I'm asking that. So, and we got a message from master chief. He says he's going to come up with a question next time just for andrew you gotta be ready uh one last thing please share this video share it with others um you know put a like on it on youtube apparently that helps us some algorithm the word i don't know
but definitely spread the word. Uh, and this this conversation in particular, I think, was is very important to be shared with as many people as we can. A lot of people struggling with that. No, not um, just that, guys. Also, um, keep keep your eyes out on social media. We're gonna try to start um pushing out the promos for our next conversation a little a few days earlier. So if you guys see it mainly on Facebook, sometimes on Instagram, but if you guys see that, if you see that promo, keep it in mind and share it. Don't forget yeah, to share, share it. it. Please share, share it. More people get to view this stuff. And we're, we're, we're not doing this to get the views. We're just doing it out there, throwing this out there so other people could hear, because maybe they have the same struggle. Yeah. Maybe they have this question in mind. Definitely. And if we're able to help them with that, that that's really what we want to do. That's yeah. the whole purpose of this. And we yeah. want to help others that might have this question in mind that might be struggling with a certain topic. So go ahead and go ahead and share absolutely. it. Like share it as many times as you want with whoever you want. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. If, you, if you press that like button, press that share button too. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> That's, correct. That's correct. Anyways, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, just as a quick reminder, once we're done here in about 35 minutes, uh, we're going to begin uh, our Sociedad Jovenes at Inland Spanish, but I want to invite everybody that is on right now because we are going to be talking to Jennifer Osorio, who is the Chief of Environmental Health uh, Services in uh, San Bernardino County Public Health. And uh, she's going to be bringing us information about coronavirus, where we're at as a county. Uh, we're going to be opening it up to questions. So please, please join us. Uh, I think it's going to be a conversation that will help all of us. Um, no matter where you're at, but specifically if you are in the San Bernardino County area or near it, right? I think it's going to be important. Uh, with that being said, we're going to end with a word of prayer. Um, uh, who prayed at the beginning? I don't remember. Uh, was that was Jason? Okay, Andrew, lead us in uh, that final prayer, please. All right. Sorry. It's... Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you once again, um, just asking that you would uh, continue to be with us as we're closing the Sabbath, Lord, as uh, we just went through this uh, this uh, interesting conversation, Lord, uh, things that we're trying to do that are very relevant for uh, not only the young people, for some of the topics that we touch on, but for uh, everyone that's watching, Lord, uh, you know, that just like Jason said, you know, the only, we, we want to share this, not not because we're trying to to, to gain some, something, Lord, but we just really want people to become aware of some of these things, right? Some of these uh, mm. uh, 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 misconceptions about uh, what we think about on these topics, Lord, but only only so that we may be filled by your spirit, Lord, and that it may help us in our Christian walk more and more. Lord, I just ask a blessing on everybody that's watching and, and on us as well. As it's in my prayer. Amen. 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 And once again, thank you, everybody. Genesis, Elias, Charlie, uh, Michelle, Master Chief, uh, Desiree, uh, Chris, every, everybody. I'm, I, I actually I'm noticed really my little this. brother was on today. So shout yes, out to Jerry as well. Absolutely. Uh, we want to thank all of you for joining us. And we hope to see you next week at 4 p.m. God willing, God give us life. Be safe. Wash your hands. Okay, wear those masks. And uh, we hope to see all of you soon.